Trust Once Lost. Chapter 17. It's not rad. An awkward silence filled the room, and meaningful glances were exchanged. Nurse Redheart's coffee seemed to have taken effect, and she placed a hoof on Daglo's foreleg to give her the emotional support needed to press on. Your Majesty, I don't question your motives, nor your ability to care for the child. Daglo swallowed dryly. But I have concerns. We shall hear them, said Luna. Feel free to speak your mind. Green is very anxious about other ponies finding things out about her. Being placed in a highly public position is going to be difficult for her to cope with. Daglo explained. But at the same time, she can't be sequestered away to protect her from public scrutiny because she needs to be socialized. She's already afraid of other ponies. And the last thing we want is to legitimize that fear by telling her she needs to hide from the general public. When she presented herself to us in her dreams, she displayed a remarkable level of control for some pony so young. Luna said. If we do not take the filly under our wing, I feel a great opportunity will have been missed. We will work with her to manage her anxiety. As the guardian of dreams, we challenge thee to find some pony more experienced in dealing with such matters. Green's guardianship is still undecided, Diglo said. I'll take Her Majesty's offer into consideration when I make my recommendation. I will, of course, bow to your absolute authority should you choose to exercise it. Before we make any decision, we should hear all the facts, Paperstack said. Redheart, you have been Green's primary nurse for the last two days. What is your assessment? On the first day I took care of Green, she was still delirious. And when I introduced myself as her nurse, she told me that she was a nurse too. Redheart said. She was very hesitant, and asked for help with everything. At first, I thought she was just desperate for equine contact, but she also seemed ashamed for needing help, and would cry, and apologize for wasting our time. Redheart looked downcast. I tried to reassure her, but after a few minutes, she couldn't remember anything I'd said. Redheart continued. She had enough awareness to read the name off of her ID bracelet, but claimed she didn't remember her own name. She kept telling me that she was a pony, but I'm not sure what exactly she meant by that. Before you ask, yes, we did check if she was a changeling. Paperstack said. We would not have asked. Luna said. Her behavior is not at all consistent with a changeling infiltrator. But we suppose it is good to be certain. Nightshift reported that during the night, Green wandered into another patient's room and introduced herself as the patient's nurse. Redheart continued. Either she honestly believed herself to be a nurse, or she was just playing pretend. I noticed that Green was given morphine by evening shift before she went to bed, so it's possible her increased confusion was a result of that. When I cared for Green again the following morning, Green was less confused, but still claimed to have no memory of what happened to her. Redheart said. She also claimed to have no grip in her hooves. Her lack of hoof grip was reported to Dr. Redcross, who instructed us to record it as non-compliance, pending a review. Her lack of coordination makes her appear much younger than she is. Watching her walk, I was worried she was going to flop like a newborn. Redheart said. Listening to her speak, you'd think she was a teenager. She's clever, and has a good vocabulary. But she's still at the stage where she thinks that no pony else could understand what she's going through. She lies constantly, and thinks no pony will notice. So that does show a certain level of immaturity. She did manage to trick one of my trainees into letting her read her patient notes. She's having panic attacks, but she also has techniques to cope with them that were clearly trained. Redheart said. That along with her general familiarity with hospital procedures suggests that she's spent some time in a hospital. If she told the princess she's experienced in this type of injury before, I would be inclined to believe her. Her sense of humor is dark. She's making jokes about things some pony her age shouldn't really be thinking about. But if it helps her cope, I'm not about to scold her for it. Redheart said. I thought I had a pretty good idea of what was going on with Green. Until she had a magic surge. A magic surge? Twilight asked. You're sure? Well, I'm no unicorn, your highness. Redheart explained. 
but my trainee who witnessed it was, and he assured me that it's not something she could have faked. The burst of unstructured magic was felt by Pony several rooms away, and afterwards she fainted and had to be treated for magical exhaustion. We thought you might be interested in seeing her themology results, so here's a copy. Paperstack provided the younger princess with a stack of papers. In summary, there's nothing wrong with her magical pathways. Certainly nothing to explain her magic surge. And as you're no doubt aware, a magic surge in a child her age is virtually unheard of. That's putting it mildly. Dr. Zerlite said. Until yesterday, the only recorded case of a foal experiencing a magic surge this late was a highness. It took Twilight a moment to realize what the doctor was saying. Wait, you mean... Oh, Celestia. Twilight grasped the edge of the table. She didn't hurt any pony, did she? No, your highness. Redheart reassured. She used up her entire mana pool, but so far her magical potential is not in the same magnitude as yours. Her mana pool is within the normal range for her age group. Dr. Zerlite explained. Most unicorns her age have difficulty expressing their magic, though. Learning to keep their magic contained is something that happens naturally during infancy. When we teach older children to cast spells deliberately, they have to work against their natural reflex to pull their mana back. Have you read any of the studies about the effects of a low magic environment and a childhood development? Twilight queried. Not that I recall, your highness. Azur Light answered. I assume it would in some way stunt the development of the thaumatic system? Actually, it's very much the opposite. Twilight went into lecture mode. Ponies that grow up in an environment with very little magic have overdeveloped thaumatic pathways, which allow them to use small amounts of magic more efficiently. Fine control is difficult for them. However, since Twilight, I'm sure this is fascinating, but what does it have to do with green? Luna cut in. Uh, right. <laughs> Twilight said. Green's thaumatic pathways. You tested them? We did, your highness. Azorlite answered. They were within normal variation, neither atrophied nor overdeveloped. Which is one of the reasons her claim to have no hoof grip doesn't make sense. If she was unable to use her magic at all from age zero to eight, then we would be able to tell. Why would she lie about that? Asked Applejack. I'm not an expert in full psychology, but that type of behavior is typically associated with an attachment disorder. Diglo said. When a foal is very young, if they don't develop a secure bond with their caregiver, they resort to different behaviors to get their caregiver to give them attention. It may be a little premature before Green has seen a psychiatrist, but... Uh... The mare looked down and began searching through her bag. After an awkward silence, it became clear that she couldn't find what she was looking for. Uh, Applejack. Diglo asked. Do you still have that pamphlet I gave you earlier? Applejack pulled a pamphlet from under her hat. Reactive attachment disorder? She read off the paper. It's common among foals in the foster care system. Diglo explained. Neglect or abuse in early development, or being separated from a caregiver they have bonded with, prevents the foal from forming a secure attachment. They have difficulty trusting others, poor self-worth, anger, and a need to feel in control. They're willful and disobedient. Sometimes they lie pathologically. They want to get attention and care, but they feel like they have to do something to get it. Some of them are very quiet and don't show any emotion in case it makes you angry and you abandon them, and others act out and scream and cry about minor things, acting like they're helpless because they're afraid they'll be ignored otherwise. It doesn't seem to fit. Redheart admitted. Although Green seems more willing to use manipulation to get what she wants than outright disobedience. She disobeyed our orders when we were searching for her in the forest. Luna countered. Even when it put her at great risk, she wanted to be in control of her rescue rather than leaving her fate in the hooves of others. It's too early to pathologize her behavior, Azurlite argued. We haven't seen how she acts in a comfortable setting. <laughs> I'm not sure there's such a thing as a comfortable setting for her at the moment, Diglo countered. Attachment disorders are on a spectrum. You'd be hard-pressed to find any abused foal who didn't have an attachment disorder to some degree. The treatment is essentially just good parenting. 
Though the trauma they've suffered makes that much more difficult. Fundamentally, it's an inability to trust. What exactly do you mean by good parenting? Asked Applejack. I'm not even a real parent. Are you sure there's not some pony more qualified? <laughs> she needs some pony to be dependable. Firm, yet forgiving. Diglo explained. Some pony to help her work through her anxiety, to cope with her stress, and to show her that she can trust them to always be there for her. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it's going to be very frustrating, for you and for her. But if you stick to it, then it'll be very rewarding. And we'll be here to give you whatever support you need. I'm sure you can do it, said Twilight. You're the most dependable pony I know. <sighs> you were there, Dayglow, Applejack said. She was so terrified of me that she threw up all over herself. Are you sure it's a good idea for me to be the one taking care of her? And I wouldn't know the first thing about helping her with her magic problems. Applejack drew her lip nervously. <sighs> Look, it's not that I don't want to help, it's just... Applejack said. To be honest, I didn't know what I was signing up for, and it frightens me a little. What if I get this wrong and I end up making things worse? If you weren't at least a little worried, I'd be concerned you weren't taking it this seriously. Diglo consoled. The important thing to remember is that you don't have to do this alone. I'll be working to make sure that you have a strong support network to call on. I also have some parenting classes which I think would be helpful, as well as counseling for you and Green. At the moment, this is just a foster placement, but for what little we know about her past, it's likely that she will need some pony to adopt her. Our goal in taking Green in as our ward is not merely to have her for ourselves, but to ensure she receives the best care possible. Luna said. While we are sure your facilities are adequate for caring for the ponies of Ponyville, this is still a small facility, without a dedicated pediatric ward. In Canterlots, Green would be able to receive more specialized care. With respect, your majesty. Azorlight responded before Paperstack could begin her defense of the hospital. If Green had a safe home to return to, she could be discharged tomorrow... Oh, today. The doctor corrected herself, seeing it was after midnight. She will need outpatient treatments and follow-up, but none of her injuries are serious enough to require hospitalization. Azorlite said. I'll need a repeat x-ray to ensure her full leg is healing correctly, and she will need to come in next week to have a cast removed. Dr. Stone explained in his monotone. If she were one of my regular patients, I would have discharged her yesterday morning. Extended hospital stays are statistically inadvisable. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Paperstack said. We should finish reviewing the case before we start talking about future plans. Redheart, you were telling us about Green's magic search? Did anything happen that might have triggered the magic search? Twilight jumped back into the conversation. My magic search was triggered by a wave of magic that later turned out to be a sonic rainbow. I don't think Rainbow was practicing her one yesterday, but I can definitely ask. Redheart looked uncomfortable at the question. Green's magic surge actually seems to have been triggered by my trainee. Redheart explained. Apparently, he has been helping his baby sister with thaumatic field pressure sensitization exercises, and decided to try them out on a patient without consulting any pony. Luna looked displeased at this revelation. I want to speak with him tomorrow. Said Twilight. That type of exercise should be very safe, so I don't see the harm in him trying it. But I want to know exactly what he did. I'm sure that can be arranged, your highness. Redheart said. After Green's tests in themology, she slept for a couple of hours, and I placed her under the care of Soothing Melody, another one of my trainees. When Green woke, she met with Diglo and Applejack, and you all heard how that went. When Melody was showering Green, she described the filly as submissive and emotionally flat, until she touched the filly's flank. Green panicked and covered herself with her tail while she did breathing exercises. And then the filly apologized to Melody for getting scared. When I talked to Green, she denied anything happened at all. <sighs> so she feels like she needs to cover for other ponies. Diglo commented. That's not a good sign. If she's trying to cover for Melody, she's not doing a very good job. Twilight noted. By saying nothing happened, she's making it seem like something much worse happened. 
She was in a lot of pain, Redheart explained. And it was the end of a very stressful day, and she probably wasn't thinking clearly. She denied pain as well, even though I could see it on her face plain as day. It seems like she's getting very frustrated. Could you imagine if Green was just standing outside the doorway, just listening in on them? Anyways, let's get on to our sneaky donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Magic 109, Darkseid, Raiden Narwhals, Black Moon, High Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, 2, Hexter, Brother and Marjorie, Darmicron, Light Ray, Rinsleth, 9852, Will Crist, Winky, Rysol, Shadow Moon, Luigi 88, Chancer Crust, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat GGF, Murder Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.